Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. Inverness County has confirmed that the municipal election will take place on Saturday, October 17th. Last Thursday, a bylaw to set up electronic voting for advanced polls was passed following a public hearing. Now the bylaw will have a second reading in council before it's officially approved. And according to what we're hearing from municipal officials, it looks like it will be approved. The bylaw would give electors a 10-day voting period when they can vote online. That would be between October 6th and October 15th. On October 17th, election day, people will only be able to vote in person at the polls. I spoke with Johnny Gillis, who is the returning officer in charge of organizing the election. He gave me more details about the county's first experience with electronic voting and about how the municipal election will look like during this pandemic. Here's our conversation. The bylaw has to go through one more reading, but it looks like it's probably going to go through, but it, but it does have to go through one more reading. And, uh, and then after that, uh, I guess they would have to contact a, uh, a convener, somebody that's going to uh, implement it. And then we have to see where we fit in. Uh, we will supply the workers, you know, for sure that part is not going to change. The only part that's going to change is that the voter will vote from home instead of going to the poll. And that's been probably the whole premise of our, our, uh, our, uh, quest to do electron, electronic voting is to, uh, because of COVID-19 COVID and, uh, and giving the people an option if they want to stay home and vote or come out to a poll. Why was electronic preferred over mail-in voting, for example? It's a good question. Uh, mail-in voting was never, never became an option. Uh, electronic voting has been around since 2012, um, not only in, um, in, in, you know, in four-year intervals, but also the by-elections and, and other conventions and so forth. It, it, it has a, a better track record, I think. Um, we just never considered the, the mail-in ballot. I don't think we would have the same controls on it as we do on, on electronic voting. Um, Maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. We just never studied it, so I can't really give you a definitive answer on that. Right, because as you know, in this rural area, there are sometimes issues with internet access and a large part of our population are seniors. So they, yeah. you know, they may be more used to voting over mail. I was just wondering if it was a question of uh, maybe funding or, or cost. No, I don't think it was that at all. No, I think it was just this was available. This is available, it's proven, it's tested. Uh, we have confidence in the, uh, in the company that's providing it, confidence, and I think that was basically all it is. And, and everything happens pretty fast. Uh, COVID-19 hit us fast. Uh, this whole election came up in the same year. So we didn't have a lot of time to sit down. And then, you know, we're working, uh, from our homes for the most part. We're not together in a group. We get together on conference, but, but it's, uh, it's a whole different, uh, different situation this year than, it, than I'd, I have ever been in before. And so what is the name of the company that's going to run the system? Intel Vote, Intel Vote. So are they taking care of, uh, you know, make sure that nobody voted, votes twice or how is that being uh, controlled? Yeah, we've had a couple of uh, Zoom meetings with them and they go over that. Um, I would have to start by saying that if, if somebody wants to cheat, they can probably cheat no matter how we do it, whether it's paper ballots on a, on a regular day or, or uh, electronic voting or mailing. If somebody wants to cheat, uh, they run the risk of getting caught it's a federal offense. It's punishable. They would be charged and it's punishable as fraud in a federal offense. So it's quite serious. <clears throat> but we try to eliminate the, the, the possibility of it happening. And, and they have created uh, a pretty secure system. Uh, everybody has an ID number. Uh, if that ID number 
appears twice in any instance, the computer act automatically shuts down. You know, so I think it's I think it's pretty foolproof from what they tell us. They've run a lot of collections. Uh, they had some uh, challenges along the way, but none of them, none of these challenges have ever proved anything wrong. So, so I think it's I think we're okay on that side. <clears throat> but uh, just based on their record, I think we trust them. Yeah. Is this something that might be considered uh, in future elections? You know, that's interesting because uh, when we sat down to talk about it the first time, I've been with the county since 2008. And uh, in 2012, the buzz was on about electronic voting. And and I didn't, I didn't think it, we were ready for it because our geography is just so huge. We, we go all the way from Marble Mountain to Meat Cove. And like you said before, we had the gaps in our communication system. And, and I really didn't think we were ready in 2012 and also in 2016. Now we're kind of being, being pushed into it. But I consider that to be a good thing. I think this will, 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 uh, solve some of those problems and and uh, if we have gaps in our communication this will highlight it and 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 maybe uh, it will result in it being taken care of and fixed so at some point we had to do it we had to get in and i think and it's and we're only going in partial way you know like uh, we're just going to do it for the advanced polls we're going to run it for a week at the beginning on the advanced polls and then the paper ballots will be on Saturday, the main day of the election. So, but it's a good test run. We'll get to see how it operates. The people will get to experience it. And I think that in four years' time, it'll be just be part of the system. So it's a good starting point. And so how would it work? Would people get uh, something in the mail? Do people need to sign up? How does it work if somebody wants to vote online? Okay, the signing up part is what I'm working on right now. Um, everybody's every every eligible voter in Inverness County uh, is 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 being tabulated. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's been tabulated on a list. It's called a voters list, and we're working on that right now. Their name, their address, their birth date, everything that would identify that person, and uh, at some point that list will be fed into their computer. And there'll be a mailing, uh, a mailing, a, a letter, a voter's letter generated from that list. And it'll be mailed out to every eligible voter in the county. And on that, on that will be directions of how to vote, where to vote, and they'll get a PIN number. Now, that PIN number is meant for the person whose name is on that letter. Somebody else theoretically could use that PIN but it could only still only be used once and they can and if there's evidence of uh, fraud they can through ip addresses and so forth trace that whoever used it right back to that residence maybe to somebody else there was one example where the husband picked up the wrong pin and used it and then when his wife went to use it it got rejected so there's things like that but they would trace that and then they they solve the problem. They give the wife a new a new pin number. Yeah. So <clears throat> so they have it. It's kind of trial and error. Since 2012, they did a lot of election uh, elections, not only in this around here, but in Newfoundland, all of the Maritimes, and maybe further. So whatever problems were going to surface, I think they have already experienced, and they have experience in in solving that problem. So but that's basically how it's going to work. There will be a, a link on that on that paper, on that letter that people receive? Or do they get it by email? How do they access the page where to vote? That letter will come uh, by Canada Post. And uh, on it will be a 1-800 number, phone number, and also a uh, a, a a computer a link to the you know to, on the computer that would take them to that site. Who is an eligible voter? An eligible voter has to be a Canadian citizen, uh, be 18 years of age, 
for over on on election day um, and uh, live in the uh, in the uh, province for at least six months prior to election day and to be in the municipality and the municipality has to be their home on election day and that's and they can vote when i say that their home on election day uh, i'm referring to maybe people that have a cottage here and if and, and then we have to distinguish between permanent residents and temporary residents so somebody that comes in here for the summer but their home is somewhere else then they would not be eligible to vote here even though they own land here they pay taxes on their land here but it's not their their home their home is somewhere else this is their summer residence but it's not considered to be their home they can only have one home they can't have two so so i i wanted to move on to polls so uh non-electronic voting how many polls are going to be throughout the the whole county if we have uh, basically there's six so there's about 10 polls per per district so you're talking about 60 polls and uh, but that will be determined by the we won't have elections in all the districts some councillors will be acclaimed and in that case uh, we will not have the election so we won't know exactly how many polls until after the nomination day that's on september the 8th right so that was my next question how would somebody who wants to run for office uh sign up and i guess to, what is the deadline we did uh, well the deadline is not until uh, september the 8th um they can in uh, file their paper anytime before that they can start filing them right now some people have filed and they sent them in to me uh, we have a, a really good web page with, with the municipality you're probably familiar with it and, and we created a portal there for the election and there's information packages and all the forms required because I have an office in the municipality in the municipal office in Port Hood but the municipal office is generally is closed to the public. So I have to I'll have to have some other way of getting the forms to them. And uh, this is, has been working really well. Uh, if they phone me up, I tell them about the uh, portal and they go to the website and they can download their forms. There's instruction manuals there. They fill out the forms and they mail them back to me. And uh, that has been working and I think that's, system we'll be doing for the rest of this year are there any signatures required or is just the form to be on the list there is, no there is signatures and it's a good question <clears throat> and uh, what we've agreed to there is that they would have it uh, authorized by a notary, a notary of the court like a judge or a, or a lawyer or or somebody that is authorized on behalf of the uh, of the court system to uh, sign these papers and uh, you know that uh, if there's somebody from uh, any part of the county, I think, I think that's available to them. There is another option that we could do something like this, and I could witness their signature, but I think it's better to have it done that way. But either way, I would be okay with it. Okay, so it's just one signature by a notary, right? It's not residents. No, there's, they, need, they, need their, they need the signatures of five people that support them, but those don't have to be witnessed. Just just the uh, person that is the candidate has to witness, needs to witness. So. And can those five people be family members? As long as they're eligible to vote, they can be anybody. And they have to be on the voters list. You know, it, it could be a problem this year because of COVID-19 to get the signatures because you would have to be, you know, knock on doors or go to different homes, right? Yeah, they. Uh, it's true. <clears throat> I don't know how they'll, They'll have, the candidate will have to figure that out. Uh, I usually ask for more than five. I want them to make sure that when they send it to me, that I don't find something wrong with, with one of the signatures, one of the, uh, so I ask them to get maybe seven, eight, nine, or 10. And then I will check off the first five that are eligible. And, and that eliminates a problem as well. But like I say, 
it, they can send me five if they're sure that they're on the list and everything. If somebody has been living, let's say, in a village for and voting there for the last number of years, then, then I would say, I would be pretty confident that that person's name is still on the list. They can phone me up too, and I can confirm it. They can phone me, and I can I can look at my computer and I can confirm who is on the list. So they could do it that way as well. How do you get on the list if you're not on it already? Okay, we ran uh, last week. There was an ad in the uh, in the uh, Oran and given the instructions to that very question. If they go to the municipal website for the county, there's instructions there as well. So basically, yes, they just email or, or call me and I'll ask them a few questions and I'll add them to the list. What's the number of jobs that have been created for this election? Okay, uh, as a general rule, uh, we have, uh, we have two, two workers per poll. So you're looking at you know over a hundred workers just for that day to run the election, and then we have people who work in in, uh, in as assistants uh, uh, on and off throughout the summer, preparing the list of electors and and uh, making the uh, venues available and hiring the workers. So so there's a lot of employment, and I ran an ad again on our website. Uh, back a few months ago, you may have seen it uh, indicating to the people that they, that we would be hiring and for them to contact me. So a lot of people have phoned. We put their names on a list. I distributed that list to the different districts, and now they are part of that of that district uh, workforce. So uh, if the district doesn't have an election, of course, then then that's terminated at that point. But Again, we have to be ready. We don't know that. We won't know that until the 8th of September. So, Have you hired everybody? Well, everybody uh, was contacted. <clears throat> uh, there's still some openings. There's some people that, uh, that said yes, that they could do it. Uh, but October is a long ways away. We don't, they don't know their situation at that time. We don't know what COVID-19 is going to be like at that time. There may be some people that will be, that will say, well, I just, I just don't feel like I want to do this. So we, we basically put, a, put everybody on, on the list and uh, we can never have too many because of COVID-19, again, we need extra workers because when I said we need a two per poll, that was four years ago. Now we need at least somebody to meet the voters at the door, to make sure that they're wearing a mask, they're, to make sure that they're social distancing, to give them direction, to allow them to pass through the poll as safely as possible. So we need workers there as well. So when I ran the ad, I asked for three per poll. I asked for a DRO, a poll clerk, and a guide. Uh, and the guide would essentially uh, make sure that people uh, sanitize their hands coming and going, that they wear masks, that they social distance. Now, maybe maybe that's even that is not enough. I've heard some uh, talk in some of the uh, conferences I was on that people have a difficult time wearing a mask for 14 hours. So I think we need some, but we need to rotate those people. We need two workers for two hours, and then we bring in two more, and they take a break. You know, so, yeah, so it's it's different this year, and uh, and we're we're changing the goalposts are moving, but we're changing with it, and we'll accommodate whatever is needed to make this a fair and a safe election. Is the election going to be more expensive for the municipality this year? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Right across the country, everything is more expensive. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean we have to we have to buy sanitizers, we have to have to buy protective equipment. We'll have to get masks. Uh, we have to we had to rent the halls for two days instead of one because on Friday we want to set the hall up for this. We want to put the tape on the floor and mark the doors and put the signs up, and all of that sort of stuff on Friday in preparation for Saturday. So even that is a big it's double of the ex the cost. Does electronic voting for the advanced polls m reduce some of the cost? It's not, I don't think it's going to reduce the, very much of the cost this year, 
But what we really wanted to do is reduce the number of people that are going to be out on Saturday to vote. If we can thin that that uh, crowd out, then that's going to help us with COVID-19. And that's that's the that's the reason that we we're really focusing on the advance poll. We're we'll running the advance poll for ten days, and we we fully hope that everybody that can t that can take advantage of that will, so that on Saturday we will have less people to to uh, worry about about their safety and so forth as they come in to vote. What is the difference of cost in general for the election this year compared to? The last election. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know that exactly. <clears throat> I know that uh, we used to do enumerations where we would have to go out and and enumerate all the districts. Uh, we did one of those in 2008, and our budget for that year with the election was probably around fifty thousand dollars or sixty thousand dollars in that range. I can tell all I can tell you this year it's going to be substantially more. Are other levels of government helping with that funding? I would hope so. That's not my department. Um, I'm just the field worker uh, trying to get the job done as accurately and as safe and fair as I can. Um, I have to, there are other people working on that, you know, from the municipality. That's, and I think that, uh, that there will be, uh, you know, because this whole thing with COVID-19, we're not in it alone. You know, the whole country is in it. All the municipalities right across the country are, are under the same stress. All the governments are under the same stress. And we've already witnessed what the, what the provincial and federal government are doing to try to relieve that stress. And I think they will recognize the, the need from, by municipalities as well. And uh, how much or when that money would come, I, I have no idea. I would hope I would hope that it would, yeah, for sure. I was wondering about vote, voter turnout. Um, would you know what it was on the last election? Yeah, we're running. We've been running about fifty fifty five percent of the eligible voters in the county. Now, it's hard to peg that because we run the. Uh, the the percentage is based on all the eligible voters, but then we don't have. We don't have elections in all in all the uh, districts, so so we're only giving you a percentage for a district, and uh, it's it, it runs about fifty five percent, which is maybe not too bad for any election. Uh, some of the municipalities uh, experience uh, drops as low as twenty, twenty five, twenty seven percent. It depends on the year if there's uh, if there's a lot of interest. Uh, you know, if there's going to be, uh, you know, a good campaign, there's different things that that tweak the uh, the interests of the voter, and they'll come out to vote if there's sufficient reason for them to do so. If everything is going good, then there's no need, and I guess that's the way they feel. You know? So it's hard to say, but I'm very proud when we get over fifty percent. That's to me is a good benchmark, a realistic benchmark. <coughs> Excuse me. I got a fan going here, blowing on me. <laughs> now, electronic voting is not going to change that. I really don't think it's going to. I think that the statistics that I've seen is that if I'm getting 50, 55% of the eligible voters in a district previously, overall, that's about what we're going to get in, uh, this time. But they'll tell you that maybe 40% or they'll probably say, okay, 60 to 70% of those 50% that voted are now voting electronically. Yeah. So they'll give you a percentage like that. But that's only shifting those that voted into another realm. It's not bringing in any new voters, not from, my, from, the, from the data that I've seen. But that's okay. That's, people are maybe, this is the way in the future. I know everything's drive through now. So people just want, they want to vote on their way home from work, you know, and they just do it in their car or whatever. Do you think that COVID would t will change something about that? In the future? This right. year. Yeah. Uh, if we get another wave, uh, definitely, yeah. If, if there's another wave of COVID, 
although we we are learning to live with it, you know, uh, until there's a vaccine, we can't go we can't go and hide. Uh, we are doing better. We're wearing masks. I've washed my hands so often this year that, that <laughs> they'll never be the same again. You know, but that's a good thing. So we are learning to live with it. And uh, maybe we, we, we can, even if there is a way, maybe we can uh, go out and do our thing. But uh, we'll have to wait and see and, and whatever. And we have to follow the directions of, of the uh, provincial health authority. You know, if they tell us that we can't, uh, we can't uh, have groups of people together, well, that's going to be a problem. Some municipalities have gone totally electronic. Cape Breton Regional District have gone totally electronic. Halifax are doing both, totally electronic and totally paper. So if something like that happened up there, they would just eliminate the paper part and keep on going. So, and I can tell you that the two major uh, populous areas in our province, Sydney and Halifax, if they're ready to go either way, then we're going to have to follow suit somehow. Right, maybe uh, in, a, in a later election, right? Yeah, and I'm not sure uh, if we, we will book it now for the 10 days for the advance poll in October. And if something happens like that, maybe the company can extend it for us. It just be a matter of them staying on site and doing it for the whole election, I would suspect. And we would just all my paperwork, and that would be that we just wouldn't do it. You know, we just stay. I'm not. I'm not saying that could happen, but I think it. It seems logical that it could. They, they would just stay on site, extend their ta their ten days into one more day, and do the do the regular election. But then you would have to see how many people are, uh, you know, are voting online if they have internet access. Anyway, you know, you know all this. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, that may be, may be, may be the cost of, of doing electronically in a district this huge, this big, with, with those difficulties. But in an exceptional circumstance such as this, we may not have any choice. And uh, if we could get, and like I say, we're, we're only talking like 50, 55 percent of the eligible voters. You know, if we can get, if we can get 40 percent of the eligible voters, that's still that's still a quorum. That's that's still a reasonable number of votes to elect a councillor. So, just uh, kind of going back a bit, is the cost of electronic voting for ten days cheaper or more expensive or the same as ten days of polls? They say it is. I don't know that because this is our first time, but they say that that it is because we don't have to rent the halls. We don't. We probably we would certainly have less workers and and all rentals and that that type of thing we will have we will provide some workers for them like whatever they want i'm not sure what that is yet neither but from that perspective yes it's cheaper uh, but uh, the majority of the municipalities in the province are doing some combination of both so until they're sure of the actual costs they're not going to they're not going to get rid of the paper ballot just yet, you know. But they tell us that we we should know something from Cape Breton when Cape Breton go through it this year, the, the regional down Sydney, when they go through it this year, that'll give us a good idea of, of how much money they save. So, but the company tells us that they could be as much as two two thirds cheaper if we did all electronic voting. But. I'm not even sure if it's possible for us to do it or not. But we'll see, what have you learned about the like municipal elections in your experience? I've al I've always uh, <clears throat> I've always had uh, uh, association with municipal election. I you know, you know councilors. Uh, I think it's uh, I think they they do a tremendous amount of work in the community. They're essential. Uh, they're open. They're transparent. I was a school teacher. They used to come to our school and, and have their monthly meetings so the kids could see it. And they, they did things like that. They're always very involved. So, so I always admired uh, the work that they did and how they did it. And 
And uh, so when I was asked if I'd be the returning officer, it, I really wanted to be because I wanted to help promote their their, their brand to promote what they're doing and to pr promote the municipal council. People talk, you know, provincial and federal, but the municipal council is, is at the grassroots. They're dealing directly, more directly with the people than any of the other two. And uh, and there's a lot of benefits. When you sat in on the meetings yesterday, did you stay, stay for the annual meeting, for the general meeting as well? Because a lot of people came in and doing presentations from all over the district, you know, that, who wanted work done to their property, to their roads, to their garbage pickup, you know, all of that sort of stuff. They go to the uh, municipal council and they deal with that on a monthly basis. So there is a lot of action. People want to build parks and make, you know, do beautification projects for their communities, you know, and they come and they, and they do their case and they're well prepared and, and they're educated and they have their diagrams and their PowerPoints. And it's interesting. So it's just nice to be a part of it. Uh, I'm, I'm at the end of it now, uh, but but I, I would hope to pass it on in in decent shape to whoever is going to be here the next in four years' time. When can people expect to get the letter in the mail? That question was asked yesterday morning <clears throat> at a uh, teleconference I was on with the company, and they said it would be two to three days before the election. But it's but the, it it comes out from from Ottawa. It's mailed out from Ottawa. And uh, he says that uh, they have this contract with Canada Post who guarantees they don't want it to come too soon because people have a tendency to put that envelope away someplace and then they forget where it is and they lose it. So they say it's optimum if it comes one to two days before. So say somewhere around the 15th of October. Well, no, they have to move it back to just before the first. So the first uh, advanced poll, I think, is electronically is on the 8th, so the letter should be in by the 6th, and they'll be fresh and right there. And he said, so far, they're right on, so we'll see. You can write to us at c18e.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.